time. Time for what? Time to put the eco boost in. <laughs> well, at least film the first part of getting everything ready. So, at least in this video, we're going to be installing the T5 to the uh, EcoBoost motor here. Now, this T5 I had on my 86 car. In fact, it was running behind that turbo car uh, before I put a TKO in it. I had it. Not only did I have it, it came with some extra goodies like a quadrant. It also came with a speedometer. Oh, no, speedometer cable. Good Lord. also came with a uh, clutch cable. And... Um, I already had a bell house because you know I use a TKO bell house on that car. So the only thing I really need to do is buy a new clutch because mine was toasted. That was in this car, it was, it was roasted. So all I need to really do is buy a new clutch. And when I bought this motor, it came already with an adapter plate for a small block Ford style transmission. So it's going to be like your, um, you know, your T5s, your AODs, or whatever, C6, C4. Uh, man, I mean. Yeah, come on, I can go on and on here. You can put tons of different transmissions behind a small block Ford Bell House, 351, 302. So, because it's already got this, because I already had the transmission, um, why not use it? Now, honest to God, I really wanted to put a 6R80 in here, or maybe even a 10R80 automatic. But the car came with um, a manual, and I kind of originally had plans to put a manual in it to begin with. So we're going to keep this because I have it now. Later down the road, if I decide that I don't want to go with a manual and we want to put a, a 6R80 in it, then that's what we'll do. But for the time being, to save a little bit of money on this build, because it's going to be expensive, um, we're going to use my T5 here. Now, I did some work on the T5. What I did do is, so what I did do is replace the uh, bearing shaft retainer here, or the uh, throwout bearing retainer um, here as well, the snout, because it was so worn out that it was, uh, it had worn a groove in it and um, there's aluminum, so it, the thing was shot. So I had to actually replace this with a heavy duty steel Ford unit, which is what's on it now. So this has been replaced. And while I was at it, I also put on a new, uh, put a new output shaft seal on it as well, uh, just because it's out, why not? I also degreased it and cleaned it up with a power washer, got everything clean. So for all those purposes, the T5 is ready to go. And um, also clean up the bell house as well. So what we're gonna do in this video is get everything made it together, get everything bolted together here so that next video, in part two, what we'll do is actually put the engine into the engine bay and drop it in. Oh, almost forgot. Another thing we have to do, and in fact, this is the most important thing. First is we have to make the starter clear. There is some block clearancing we have to do on the EcoBoost motor for a standard Ford starter. In fact, a standard mini starter, high torque mini starter like this one um, to work on the uh, the adapter plate with a Ford bell house or a small block Ford style bell house. So we gotta do that as well. We gotta do that first before we can put all this stuff together. And again, as I keep saying, this is Project Ego Brews, 1979 coupe, red interior, original 2.3 little car. It's been stripped out for the EcoBoost. This is receiving the EcoBoost motor. It's got the uh, AJE EcoBoost K member in it. It's been primered. We got AJE coilovers in it. Cadillac calipers on 13 inch Cobra Rotors S95 spindles and a S95 star power rack, which will be powered by a Volvo pump. So, Project Ego Bruce, one step closer. Boom. All right, let's lay out everything here, I'll show you guys. I thought I had everything I needed for this install, but of course, it's not that I didn't have it. Um, I had most of the stuff, but it's that I chose to replace a lot of this stuff with new components. Um, because I want new components in my build here, but let's lay it out here. So, okay Let's go over everything Yes, we have a McLeod clutch. This is a McLeod Street Pro 86 to 00 10 and a half by 1.0625 10 spline clutch for a T5 This is gonna be a nice driving clutch. This is gonna be a grabby race clutch This is good to 400 and something horses. I think I think it's 450 torque or something like that. That's plenty for this for now okay I want a comfortable driving awesome driving car that's what I'm going after here I'm not going for a race car yet but anyways so we got a clutch kit for it brand new clutch I've got a uh, alignment tool 10 spline alignment tool I have a new throwout bearing here I also have a 
pilot bearing that came with the cloud. I'm not going to use this. It's a solid bearing. I don't know why they would not put a roller in their kit, but they don't. So, once I saw that, I decided to not use the use that one. Then we got a flywheel. You're probably asking, why did you buy a new flywheel? I've got like two of them stacked here. This is like my third flywheel, but I got this one because this is a zero balance flywheel okay you need zero balance because this is internally balanced engine you do not want to put a 50 or 28 ounce flywheel on an internally balanced engine okay that's not good why i broke out the uh, bell house there i was like you know what that ball stud is worn out so of course i'm not gonna replace the ball stud without replacing the fork new clutch fork because yes they do wear out my clutch fork was worn out Okay, this is a new clutch fork. They wear out right here where the ball rides. It's a new clutch fork. Okay, let's see what else we got in here. Flywheel bolts. You know why I bought this? Because I don't have any. Wait, wait, there's more. What is this? Oh, a roller. This is a M7600-A Ford Racing roller pilot bearing. Okay, new ball. Okay, this is a stud ball stud for the bell house that the clutch fork rides on those also wear out mine was worn out oh pressure plate bolt kit yeah i thought the clutch came with this it doesn't you gotta buy it so i didn't have the bolts for the clutch i didn't have bolts for the flywheel i wanted to buy a new fork buy a new ball stud. so i got a whole bunch of new parts here from summit racing of course only the best because they are down the street from me and it is awesome having a summit nearby Let's look at the adapter plate kit, yeah? Okay, so this does use a standard small block Ford style uh, mid plate here. So we'll set that out. Okay, yeah, this is Esslinger, Esslinger's, Esslinger, Esslinger. This is their adapter kit. It's a nice pricey kit, but lucky for me, the gentleman I bought this motor from, it came with it. Score because these two pieces together are really expensive. In fact, I can't remember how much this piece is. I'll put it on, on the screen. Uh, this is the bell house adapter, but you also need the uh, spacer. This is the flywheel uh, crank spacer that is necessary because if you move the bell house out this much, you must also move said flywheel out as well, okay? So that's what we got here. This has already been installed, it looks good. And the way this works from this point back is just like any other small block Ford or any other Ford for that matter, small block or big block, all right? So your mid plate will go on. I've already marked the flywheel, so it'll slide on here, and then, of course, the clutch kit, and then it'll transmission, bell house, everything else, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna slap this stuff together. However, let's look at the starter. That's the biggest problem. If you wanna know more about the Eagle Boost setup, check out the link right here. All right, let's take a look at this starter. So. Being near a Summit Racing is kind of nice because they have a scratch and dent section, and their scratch and dent section had this Power Master um, high torque, high performance uh, adjustable mini starter for a small block four. This is a 157 tooth, which matches our billet flywheel here. It also is a 157 tooth, and um, yeah, this will work except you have to clearance the block. Let me show you this. So actually, this is adjustable, meaning you can clock it. You can adjust the clock, and that's what just fell off a second ago because I had the plate removed. But you can remove this plate, which allows you to take off this ring and clock it. Okay, so it's, it is pretty adjustable, which is nice. But let me show you here. Okay, so the EcoBoost, the Essling, Esslinger um, adapter plate, clearly you've got some issues here. Now that's a lot of block, okay? We're not gonna clearance out this much of the block. You don't need to. In fact, if you're going this route, Essling, Esslinger sells a starter that you don't have to modify um, your engine block. But let me show you here. It's not that bad. And we're gonna do this because quite frankly, Essinger's kit is very expensive. I wanna say it's, a, it's like a five or maybe even $600 starter, which is crazy. But what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna line this up. And now you can really see how much clearance we have here. We have about that much of the block um, to clear off here to get this guy to slide in. Now, luckily, being this, that this is adjustable, like seriously, I don't need much room except for right here um, to clear the block. So we can angle this really any way we can, as long as it fits in the car. We won't know that until we get this motor in the car. 
But um, this will let me rotate it and clock the starter in here uh, to give me more just ability, more room. There's plenty of room behind here. Let me show you this side of it. Okay. So, yep. So now you can kind of see about what we're looking at here, clearancing. Um, in fact, this whole section of block here is hollow. Not to worry, you're not grinding into water jackets and crazy like that. Let me show you what we're gonna be clearancing. So this section right here is hollow, it's empty, okay? So this is a rib, obviously right here. Um, but anyways, I don't, I'm not worried about compromising the engine or the strength here. As long as we don't go, in my opinion, as long as we don't go past the seal, or we don't, as long as we don't go past this machine into the void or cavity in here, um, then I won't have to worry about in the future if I ever I put on a, um, you know, an automatic, because that, that's a real thing. If I put on a 6R80 on here, I don't want the, the 6R80 to not fit because I've machined it. But that's not going to be the case. Um, all your mounting holes are on here on the oil pan as well as on the engine block side as well for your 6R80. Um, this has no, it's, it'll be fine. Okay, we're not going all the way to the block. Um, you may be thinking we're weakening it. We're not. We're taking off this much on the side of the block, just right here to fit a starter. Not worried about it. All right. I need quite a bit of clearance. Again, there's still a lot of meat here, guys. A lot of metal, not that worried about it. So we got a chunk of the block ground down. That's cool. Now we can slide this up in here on the dowel pins. And hopefully I can do this, show you, but there's plenty of room here. So we're gonna get everything bolted together though. That'll be the true test. I've got this thing clocked to about where I think I'm gonna like it. I'm just gonna put the starter about right. Oops, sorry, about right here. So it looks good. You can see how tight it is back in there. But it puts, puts the uh, terminals in a good spot, kind of clocks it downwards, and hopefully gets it down and away from the exhaust. I can't go down any further, but again, this is a four cylinder in line four, and it's pretty narrow. I think we got plenty of room in the engine compartment. But if we don't, we can always clock it some more, or even look at a different starter, you know, if we had to. Now this heater hose is going to be in the way. Hopefully I can slide the bell house underneath this heater hose without any problem. It is removable. Right now, this is just a coolant hose. There's no coolant in it, so. We can remove it to get out of the way. This is why this is in the way. I was initially gonna clearance um, the bell house and this plate, it's not necessary. Just need to slide it underneath it as well. You can also remove this as well from it, from the block if you had to, but I just removed the studs. So the studs are removable. The studs will go into here and the bell house will slide on it. So let's go ahead and install our flywheel. Oh yeah. There we go. So I went ahead and tested for this earlier. There we go. And uh, marked it so it's nice and aligned. Of course, if you never put a flywheel on, you do know that one of the bolts is off center. You can see, look at these two compared to the other ones. They're off center just enough so you can only install the flywheel one. You cannot screw this up. You have to clock it until the bolts line up. Now these bolts are blind on a small block Ford. These go through the crank or can go through the crank. So you wanna put some sort of a seal on the bolts. In this case, we're just gonna put some Loctite on it and uh, tap it in. Then we'll need to install the pilot bearing. Okay, I'm gonna torque these down to 80 foot pounds. All right, time to tap in our Ford Racing pilot bearing, M7600A. Can't screw these up, there's only one way to go. You can't put them in like this because there's a lip on it. So it'll go in just right here. Hear that ting ting? It's all the way in. Cool. Okay, now we install the clutch. First thing we do is we're gonna tap in the dowel pins. There is three pins, I believe. The dowel pins just locate it. I'm gonna go fat side in right there <clears throat> these can be kind of a bear i probably should have hammered these in but clearly don't accidentally hammer these into the threaded spot right it's clutch time again 
This is the McLeod Street Extreme, I believe. Let's see here. No, Street Pro. This is the McLeod Street Pro. Now, I ran a Street Extreme in my uh, turbo car back here, and I actually loved it. I thought it was a great feeling clutch. Um, however, I don't think it was maybe enough for the turbo, uh, <clears throat> but I really liked it. Now, these do obviously have a good and bad side, or a forward and backwards, if you will. Make sure this thick part here is facing towards the back of the car or the bell house, because if you put it on this way, you actually will hit the pilot bearing, and guess what? You'll never have any clamping forces. Okay, so you don't, don't do that. So the clutch will go in this way. We're gonna clean the pressure plate up. So the dowel pins are there for a reason. It holds your pressure plate in place, just like this. And then we'll torque it down. And yeah. That's really it. So let's clean up before we install the clutch. First thing I want to do is clean this just like I did my flywheel. This Street Pro clutch should give us a nice, uh, nice feel. This is where your clutch alignment tool is going to come into play. Just like that. I'm going to sit there, hold the clutch in place while we put up the pressure plate. And I have to admit, it's pretty weird installing standard, like, small box Ford, Fox body stuff here <laughs> on a uh, EcoBoost. Now, the key here is to install these a um, little bit at a time, going from corner to corner. Kind of like an intake. Okay, I thought I'd take a second and, uh, you know, give my back a break, right? Get up, stand up for a second. So, um, we have to replace the ball stud. Went ahead and zapped it off with an impact wrench. You can see kind of how worn this is. Now, I've seen them worse. They actually get so bad that they don't become round anymore. They almost become, you know, pointed. So this slowly mushrooms out. Um, and this one's pretty badly badly worn. Let me show you this compared to a new one. But, you know, while you got your clutch out, your transmission out, you always should inspect, inspect these. Because what happens is, you can see that the tip of this is a little bit... Um, it's a little bit higher, if you will. So what happens is when this wears out, it actually, you know, decreases your length of travel in your clutch fort. Now, this one came off with a lock ring, a lock washer. We're going to put this one back on, put it in place, and zip it back down. Okay, we're going to grease up our components here. Now, we want to grease everything that's metal to metal. We're also going to install the clutch um, fork, and we're also going to install the uh, throwout bearing here. Now, it really anything that's metal to metal, we want to make sure... We put a little bit of grease on it. I don't want to go overboard because you don't want this stuff flying and hitting, getting into your clutch. You definitely don't want grease into your clutch. Now, I'm actually going to be using high temp wheel bearing grease. This stuff is really sticky um, and it will, you know, maintain the heat. Rod. It'll handle the heat underneath the engine bay and well, the heat coming out from the clutch itself. So I've already always used this as a lithium based premium uh, wheel bearing grease. But this is what we're going to be using. We're going to be using a little bit of red stuff here onto the clutch components. And again, make sure we do this correctly and not put enough grease on something where that it flings around and goes everywhere onto our clutch. But we do want to make sure this is installed correctly. So if you notice this thing has a little point pointer on it, see the little point right there? This is going to be pointed towards the clutch cable. So it's going to slide in like this. Now what we're going to do, is, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the clutch cable this points towards the clutch cable just like that. So we're going to put a little bit inside the fork here and around here where this is sliding because this is all metal to metal contact guys this is going to be pivoting on your retainer and they're going to be the you know the pivot ball here is going to, be, going to be also pivoting inside your clutch fork so we're going to stick some grease in there not going to go overboard okay we're going to wipe a little bit on our on these fingers here now we're going to put just a little bit i want to put a thin film here this is the contact surface this contacts your uh, pressure plate fingers. So we're gonna put a little bit on there. Now this is internally greased. We don't need to do anything with the bearings itself. These are internally greased. We're just gonna put a little bit more onto the ball because the ball does have a lot of friction on it. Time to continue this up tomorrow. Okay, so next day, I pulled the bell house off, so I actually couldn't move the uh, clutch fork at all. It, was, it, was, it felt like it was binding. Um, not only that, it was pushed 
way far out this way. Um, sorry, it was way far out this way. So I, I started looking at it and when I dug into it, it turns out this part of the clutch right here or the clutch fork is hitting uh, the pressure plate. So you can even see it right there. So I called McLeod support and waited on them to call me back. Um, but that is a standard style Ford. It's a fixed length. It's not adjustable, of course. Um, and it is the same length as the old one. But anyways, um, the new ball stud and the new fork is pushing this into this ring right here on the pressure plate on the clutch. So I couldn't move the clutch. So I'm glad I found it now before installing it. But it, I could tell it didn't look right. It didn't feel right. So I pulled it apart and just take a look at it. And that's where we're at. Most likely what I'm going to end up doing here is taking this lock ring out of it. Um, which is right here, which raises it. It's a thick, it's a thick lock washer. It's about that thick. It comes from Ford. It's standard to have those on the bell house and kind of locks it in place, right? It's a lock washer, the thick lock washer. But also, you know, is going to push it out about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe even eighth of an inch. I'm not sure. It's pretty thick. And if that's the case, we're just going to remove it and put some Loctite in place of it. That'll move everything in. I think just enough to make it perfect, but. Still, I want to call them real quick to make sure to see if an adjustable ball stud is needed for this clutch setup. But um, I think just removing the washer might do the trick. All right, let's see if this makes any difference at all. Looks a lot better, actually. Let's install the throwout bearing here. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, so I can tell right off the bat, this fork was so incorrectly position but now we have just enough rooms the fingers are touching right there so it's nice and far back uh, this is angled more towards the back of the bell we have nice leverage here and um, I think it's good yeah. All right, off camera, I decided to go ahead and just try to turn the motor over. Now, I didn't record this for a reason. I thought everything was going to be okay. But when I turned the motor over by hand, I realized that it wouldn't even turn over all the way. It was hitting horribly on the bell house. The clutch was scraping the bell house really, really bad. So much so that I couldn't even turn the motor all the way over. All right, well, I know why the engine hits a clunk. It's not the transmission, but it is the clutch. The clutch is hitting let's see if you guys can see that in there I know you probably can't let's see right come on right in there right there it's hitting the bell house there's a arm on the the bottom of the clutch here in fact you can probably see it going in this way let's see here oh yeah yeah that's right there yeah this is literally hitting the bell house like this is supposed to be for a small block Ford five liter this bell house is off an 86. It literally has an E6 part number. So this bell house was the same manual bell house that was this, in this car when I was running a T5. And it says right there, Street Pro Mustang 86 to 00, 10 and a half by blah, 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 spline. However, this pressure plate does not fit in my bell house. So I got to call my cloud back. I just talked to him a second ago. So yeah, yeah, that, yeah. We'll see what we can come up with. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I'll get right to it. Oh, man. So, their measurements are off somewhere, I think. But long story short here is uh, it, the crank spacer is probably too thick and the uh, flywheel's too far out. That's why I had problems with the pivot ball. And that's also why I've got problems now with the clutch in the bell house. All right, so it's been a few days after talking to Esslinger on the phone. Um, basically, I came to the conclusion that obviously the, the crank is just spacing everything out a little bit too much. I also reached out to the North Texas Fox Body Club for anyone who may have their motor laying on the ground or on a um, engine stand uh, to check the measurements between the flywheel and the block. And uh, just basing that on, I can definitely tell that that you know the flywheel from the surface of the block adapter plate and a standard flywheel to the block on a 302 is much narrower than what I'm seeing here. So with all that in mind, it's enough evidence that the flywheel is indeed coming out further than it really needs to be. Um, that's why I had problems with the, the bell house and that's also how I had problems with the clutch fitment. So what's cool about this though is actually McLeod was a huge help knowing 
that it wasn't a problem with a product. Okay, they make these clutches for Mustangs all day long, and they don't ever have anybody having issues with a clutch hitting the fork like I'm having. Um, they were willing to help big time. Uh, they understand that I'm doing a one-off deal. They understand that it's not normal. It's, it's unique. They deal with people like this all the time. They were willing to help. In fact, they have on file um, a bunch of engine dimensions like because they build clutches. So they have on file in the database, I guess, a bunch of you know dimensions from factory engines. What came out of that was really interesting. For me, at least I thought it was, is that a stock EcoBoost engine on a 2.3 liter here the surface from the crank to the block is 0.275 inches. Interestingly, it's the same on a V8 Ford. On a 302 5 liter, it's also 0.275 between the distance between your crank snout face here and the face of your block. What does that mean? For me, it means whatever distance you move the bell out, you need to move the exact same distance out from the crank. So knowing that, I went into here, took the crank spacer off, got everything torn down, and measured this. And this ended up being about 100 hundreds of an inch um, thicker than the bell house, okay? Which ended up being about two millimeters. So I had a machine shop surface this down. Now, I called Esslinger. I've been working with Esslinger. Um, I sent them all the dimensions. I made a bunch of measurements. I told them my theory, told them what I think. I think that, you know, the spacer is out too far. They're more than willing to work with me and make a new crank spacer. Um, so he, they're, they're, they're acknowledging that this could be an issue, I guess, at least for me, um, and they're willing to work with me. But just knowing what I know, and being the impatient guy that I am, I found a local machine shop because I wanted it done now. This is stalling my project. So man, I found DFW uh, Precision CNC right down the street here in Mansfield, South Mansfield, and Josh over there was nice enough to take this in and fix it for me instantly. I told him my problems, told him everything, told him how critical it was that this machine, this part stays extremely flat and true. Has to, right? Because it's, you know, holding my flywheel. Um, and we determined that, you know, two millimeters off would bring this thing to the same dimension here as we got um, my bell house adapter. So the bell house is, I believe, I'm using millimeters just cause, but it was 19.65 millimeters. So that's what we machined this to as well for thickness, 19.65, which ended up being two millimeters off um, than what they have here. So we machined it down to millimeters to make up for all the differences. Hoping this is gonna be enough. We're gonna install everything again and see if it solves my problems. One of the things about when you machine this piece down is now you gotta worry about a few things. You gotta worry about getting into the lip here that your pilot bearing sits in. You gotta worry about the pilot bearing now hitting this <laughs> right here, um, which is this hub, hub centric on the stock factory. Um, so, and you also have to worry about the threads bottoming out. So the threads into the stock crank here and the threads um, that go into your factory small block forward here don't bottom out and hit the surface. So there's a lot of considerations to take whenever you machine this down. Um, everything goes in consideration. So maybe, you know, the correct fix would be to, you know, make this thicker, but I didn't have any issues. I've measured out everything. Um, I've got enough space between the pilot bearing here and this crank snout. I mean, they're, they're almost kissing each other. They're very close. And I've got threads left in all the locations. I've measured the bores here, or the, the bosses, the bolt bosses here in the stock crank. And then also ran this on the uh, the flywheel with the bolts in here to make sure that I had enough thread they weren't poking through. And they're not. There's about three or four threads left, so which is not much. But so the threads are going to be driven in more everywhere, and everything's going to be brought in about two millimeters. We're going to see if that helps. If it doesn't, I'm going to call Esslinger back, and I'm going to work with them to get this stuff fixed. But I think I have a suspicion based on everything I know and everything I've learned that this is going to work. So first, thank you, McLeod for not just being like, not a problem hanging up, not at all. In fact, they call me back. They're talking to me more about it and help me out and give, give me the dimensions to help out this thing. So, dude, props to them. Their customer service was rad. Um, and also thank you, Josh, from DFW Precision CNC for doing this for me. Like, he just like, come on in, let's go back and take care of it right now. That's what I'm talking about. Now you may be wondering why I'm not talking up Esslinger's support. Um, when I talked to Brian, um, he made it pretty clear that they were having other customers with similar issues. They had a customer with a C4 um, that was pushed into the transmission and broke the pump, which again is another indicator that the uh, that the snout 
where the C4 uh, torque converter rides into, the same snout we put the pilot bearing into on the crank spacer is just pushed out too far. So when he torqued the bell house down on the automatic transmission, he pushed that torque converter into the pump and snapped the pump gear, which is common if you don't install a torque converter correctly. But I asked him his experience with installing this kit, and he said he put it into his son's or some family member's uh, car, and he couldn't recall if he had to clearance the bell house. His solution to me was to just clearance the bell house and move on with it. My response to that was, what about the starter? You know, because I'm understanding that it was out this much, I knew using a standard Ford starter, I was gonna have some engagement issues or wear issues. Um, his response to that was, you know, most people buy their kit, didn't really know, just you had to clearance the block. Now, the only concern with Essinger for me is, and I'm not here to badmouth the company by any means, um, they make a lot of really, really cool products, uh, but my, my real concern is that there was no consideration in um, how the kit fits or there was no consideration in what they're doing from this point forward to resolve it for other people, okay? I have no problem fixing myself. Guys, this is a one-off build. It may be 100% just me, but I have no problem just taking care of the situation and fixing it and moving on. It, I get it. You have to do it with custom cars all the time, especially one-offs like this. My concern was the email conversations I had back and forth with Brian, uh, me concerning what I tell you guys for people who are maybe wanting to do this in their car, um, or people reaching out to me and says, okay, I wanna buy this kit, but what's Essinger doing about it? Ghosted me, I have not heard an answer from them. Their only answer was, listen, we offer to machine this for you and send you a new crank adapter on your specs. I'm not an engineer, okay? I don't want my specs. I don't need to give this company R&D um, and tell them my measurements and them to say, yeah, whatever you want, we'll send it to you. That's not how it works. Their kit needs to fit, it doesn't. Take that into consideration. I'm not saying don't buy it, but buy it with these kind of things in mind. Um, and again, I responded and said, listen, man, I'm not concerned about me. Let's forget about me. Let's forget about this kit. Forget about my install. What do I tell you guys when people ask me what is Essinger doing about it to fix this? But I can't answer that because they wouldn't tell me um, and they have not responded. So take that for what it is, okay? It's back on and it is much better. However, it is still kissing it. Look at that. Now, I can actually spin the motor over now, uh, but you can see some metal shavings down there on the bell house where it is just kissing it. So, yes, I'm gonna clearance the bell house just a little bit for that spot is. It's frustrating though. So, um, I'm actually gonna hook up the starter and then we're gonna put power to the starter make sure that everything engages. I'm worried about the starter engaging because if this is off, then your teeth on your starter, when it pushes out here, right? So when the solenoid pushes this out, it only comes out so far. That's all intolerances, that's all specs from Ford. It's gonna come out just enough to engage the teeth. And if it's too far out, you engage a quarter of the teeth or even half the teeth and guess what happens? You start stripping gears. And next thing you know, you'll have no start situation down the road because your starter's never engaged properly. Do we want that on this new build? No. I'm a little bit frustrated with this, this Essinger kit. Um, two millimeters we took off and it's still, the clutch is still touching. And just off the measurements I know from other people, um, again, based on the back of the spacer plate on a stock small block Ford, the distance between that area and the face of the back face of the flywheel, it's quite, it's significantly shorter than this is. So, you know, you can only go so much on that spacer plate because now if we go too, much, too far back, you can't install a pilot bearing, you can't install the, the bolts because there's not enough thread, you know, et cetera, et cetera. What should happen here is the spacer or the, the plate needs to be um, larger. Also, what I've considered is a thicker um, mid plate. So you can hopefully, <laughs> get this in just a little bit thicker and um, that would compensate for this difference as well now how thick I don't know maybe you could stack two of them maybe that would be too much I don't know but we're not stacking mid plates just yet but that probably would fix it but I think we're close okay got the bell out you can definitely see where I'm scraping at least I can turn it now I can turn it all the way around you can see the two marks that's from earlier and it stopped dead right here and then the two millimeter difference for moving the spacer back. So we're gonna clearance this just a little bit. Um, it's just kissing it. Like I said, I can turn it all the way over. 
now, uh, but it does just touch, so we're going to clear this up. So, look who came to say hi. Come in here to strong arm the motor into the boss car here. Yeah, well, we're going to try to put it in, I think. Well, that would be great if we can, but I was kind of feeling Sean in to all the, uh, then all the uh, Esslinger here shenanigans we've been dealing with. The, uh, engineering development stage. Yeah. So. I'm two car guys. <laughs> don't have an engineering degree. <laughs> We're going to make it fit, though. We'll make it work. Strong arm it in there. Yep. Oh, right there. Okay, go ahead and do me another full turn. All right, dude, we had a clearance all this off the ear of the block because, yeah, the starter hole right here was, like, it was way into there. Man, I don't even think about that, but... Yeah, so we had to clearance this just to get even this bolt in, okay? So tiny head, but that's about all I had to do right there to get this bolt slot in. So that sucks. We had to clearance more part of the block. So you could do this or you could still spend 500 something $50 on the starter from um, Esslinger. But the reason why we're doing this, now we're going to mark the teeth on here. So we want to make sure that the engagement is all the way on the teeth of the flywheel. I think if we don't do this, we won't really know for sure how much the starter is actually engaged. This is really dry. Oh, oh boo. Uh, you gotta be it does a good job cleaning. Look. Oh, well. Look at it, look at it clean those teeth. All right, we're using chalk instead. That's all I got. We're up. We're about to do it. All right, yeah, so. We've got it rigged up. <laughs> we got everything clearance now. We got everything rigged up. We're going to arc the starter here and just make sure the motor turns over without grinding because now's the time and then we'll pull it apart and see if we got any marks so here we okay. go Looks pretty it's good cranking it's cranking didn't sound like it's grinding it didn't sound like it was uh not engaging um i think it needs gas it needs gas <laughs> i smell gas it smells I like know. varnish man that gas dude i pulled this apart earlier pretty bad oh dude yeah yeah it's been sitting a while okay cool let's take the start off and check out the teeth. The teeth. The tooth is. All right, recording. All right. Okay, so we pull the starter out. We can see. You can see the line in there. See that that groove right there. See on video, Sean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's half. That's about a little less than halfway. That's probably I don't know a third of the teeth engagement. So now here's the deal. Now this tooth is clearly a lot bigger than this is, but that's got some decent engagement on the flywheel. Um, it's just not as much as I wished it was. It was. I wish it was a little bit more. So this is again all in an indicator on how everything is spaced incorrectly with that spacer kit. So, oh man, the only other thing we can do at this point is space the bell house more out with or double up on the uh, space, which means pulling everything off, clutch, flywheel. Not recommended by Yeah, any no, I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let it ride. I know I it's not ideal. High compression, it's not a high compression motor. It's got a, yeah. you know, high, high torque starter. It's a beast of a starter for this car. Yeah, What's this, what it's gonna do eventually is it's gonna wear out the teeth on the, the ring gear here. Mm -hmm. It's gonna wear them out uneven. Um, it's gonna take a lot of miles to do that, but it will. It will absolutely do that. And, and it will. We'll just push the car. We'll push the car. <laughs> Be fine. It's engaging, but it's the uh, yeah. yeah. If you're running 11 to 1, 12 to 1 piston. Oh no, yeah, yeah it's really, a little four cylinder. Yeah. It's not like we're putting a ton of load on. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, if it was a big engine, high compression, um, you're putting a lot more wear and tear on those teeth than this little so four cylinder. Is. Right not to mention this flywheel is a lot bigger than the stock yeah. one is because this is a this is a VA flywheel, man. So it's Hard you know teeth. it's yeah. it's a it's big. So you got more surface area for clutch. You're gonna have it, the clutch is going to feel great on this little four banger, I think. I, I got a real mild 400 horsepower clutch, but that's 400 V8 torque. And this thing's going to have a lot of torque from the bottom end, but it's got a lot of surface area. Um, and the flywheel, believe it or not, on this is lighter than the stock EcoBoost yeah. flywheel is. So it's all, the rotating mass is all lighter. So, all right, we're going to roll with it. Let's put the transmission in. Come on, girl. Twisted. There we go. There we go. Oh, yes. look at that. So last time, this thing would not go all the way in without forcing it because of the clutch fork. So now, we got normal clutch fork engagement. 
Sweet. Let's get some of these in here. Okay, we'll fire up the power tools, get this thing spun on quick. Whew. How do you feel? We're getting there. I'm getting there. I guess we need to go borrow an engine hoist, don't we? Yes. Let's go type it, Kevin. You guys, we're gonna have to wait till part two. We're ending part one here. What a fun fiasco that was, huh? Still not 100% happy, because I like things to be perfect, but. Well, when you're building a custom car, nothing's gonna be perfect. It's working though. Hey, it's working, it's binding. We don't have the clutch. Clutch play and the placement's good. The clutch fork is good. Nothing binds down when we spin the motor over, so. Something you definitely don't want to find out. <laughs> no, we did a lot of hard work now versus in the car, so. That's important. Hey, that's right. Hey guys, follow me on Instagram or check out housedo.com because it has everything here. It's got the Instagram feed, the Facebook group, um, and it's got all the YouTube videos sorted by projects. So you can check everything out in one spot. But if you follow me on Instagram, you also get lots of insights of stuff I'm doing here before it becomes a video. And that's kind of cool. Um, and that that's it, except for subscribe because if you subscribe, it helps us out because this is not easy. And you get notifications for part two coming up because we'll be stabbing this bad boy in Project Ego Brews back here. So, Ooh. slow, but we're doing stuff. So, that's it, man. Hey, y'all keep working on your Fox bodies. See you next time.